I have got some fun questions here that were sent to me by some of my friends on Twitter, and mm -hmm. um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna pop a couple of these at uh -oh. you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, let's see. We have Justin Gill who set, who wrote with the discovery of the Bose Einstein condensate. What possible exploits can be gained by humanity through its understanding, and what effects, if any, could be seen in everyday life? Well, everybody knows the laser. We see the lasers everywhere. They're in our grocery checkout stand. They're in our CD player. The mm -hmm. internet is made possible by laser, laser beams. Lights. Laser beams are everywhere. But you see, lasers are based on light. Mm -hmm. Light that vibrates in unison called coherence. Wouldn't it be better if we could do that with atoms? Have an atomic laser. Atoms vibrating in unison. If so, that would revolutionize computation. Quantum computers, quantum right. teleportation, all of that depends on atoms vibrating in unison, which is the most difficult thing to achieve in the laboratory. That's where Bose-Einstein condensates come in. Kay. Einstein showed that if you cool down a substance till it's really, really cold, mm -hmm. all the atoms vibrate in unison and you have a super atom, a super atom. You can test all the bizarre features of the quantum theory for large objects because everything is vibrating in unison. But, says Einstein, impossible, because who could cool down something near absolute zero? Well, today right. we do that all the time. We cool down substances near absolute zero. We're still not to absolute zero. Yeah, though. we can't reach it. That's the third law of thermodynamics. Right. <laughs> but the Nobel Prize was given to scientists like at MIT that actually created Bose-Einstein condensates in laboratory. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Atomic lasers in the future. Okay? Mm -hmm. Some people even think that it may give us a shortcut to teleportation, a new way of just beam, literally beam atoms across the room if you can master the art of quantum coherence. Mm -hmm. For example, the CIA is interested in this because their computers will eventually run out of power. Silicon power cannot last forever. Mm -hmm. The CIA wants to crack codes. Yeah. Some codes are very difficult to crack. Yeah. If I have a quantum computer, I can crack the most difficult codes on the planet Earth. Or create codes that are the most difficult to crack. That's right. And remember <laughs> that by 2020, the age of silicon will pass. Silicon Valley could become a rust belt after 2020. We could have a depression much bigger than the uh, subprime mortgage crisis of today because silicon power cannot go on forever. Every mm -hmm. Christmas, we assume that the previous Christmas, our computers are twice as powerful. That cannot go on forever. Right. After a while, we have to go to quantum computers. Your Pentium computer has a chip that has a layer 20 atoms across. Mm -hmm. 20 atoms across, the smallest layer so in your small. Pentium chip. Mm -hmm. By 2020, it'll be five atoms across. At that point, electrons don't know where they are because of the uncertainty principle and will leak out and your computer will short circuit <laughs> and that will mean a depression That's in Silicon end. Valley. <laughs> that is the end. So we physicists are desperately trying to negotiate that end with quantum computation, and Bose-Einstein condensates will be part of that solution. That's, that'll, be, that'll be great if we could solve that problem and continue on in our computing power. Yeah, atomic lasers. Definitely. I mean, it boggles the mind to think what you can do with coherent radiation. Yeah. Star oh. Trek, watch out. <laughs>